y'all it's your girl Lonnie and I'm here with a kind of story time based off of how I made it through my toxic pregnancy I just recently had a baby if you guys didn't know he'll be one in about 19 days when I come to think about it it has been like what two years I found out I was pregnant with my son in May of 2022 um, he was not planned. It was definitely unplanned, unexpected. I definitely had to make the decision whether to keep my son or not keep my son. And he's here, so clearly I made the decision to keep him. And it was not the easiest decision. I do want to do a little disclaimer here and say that if you are pregnant, if you are going through something similar like this, neither decision is easy to make and just remember you have to make whatever decision is best for you and your life and whatever you can handle and when you make the decision to decide whether or not you want to keep a child factor in everything but mostly factor in can you do it alone and can you handle it um, neither decision is easy one is a lifetime commitment you know so it's not just a walk in the park it's not easy but neither decision is easy and you should definitely do what you feel is best for you and your body so i'm here telling this story because my pregnancy was not the easiest it was very toxic it was very hard it was not soft girl nothing <laughs> Um, I cried every night. I probably cried every night of my pregnancy and I just want to share my story because I know there are other women out there that may go through it that may feel like they're alone and they don't have anyone to talk to or may feel like they're not going to make it through it because I felt like that at the time and I didn't have anyone to really rely on or talk to about it. My friends were kind of fed up with the situation and I kind of just shut down and stayed to myself. So this was my second pregnancy. It was not my first one. With my first kid, she is older. I had her when I was pretty young and I used to think back then that that was toxic for me, but it really was not toxic. It's kind of just, it was kind of just a situation of while wow, we were just kids and it was a lot to take on and to grow up being so young and you already know that men develop a little slower than women. So looking back as a grown-up I feel like that was not a toxic situation for me it just was we were kids actually being grown going through a pregnancy going through it alone crying every night doing things alone it was very hard for me especially with this being my second kid I always wanted to do it right the second go around and you know who I mean like, who doesn't dream about doing it the right way. I knew I made this decision when I decided to keep my kid. You know, we all have choices to make in life. You kind of just got to choose your heart and what you'll do it with. I do want to say that when I did decide to keep my son, his dad did tell me at the time he was not ready for another kid. I was prepared to be alone with my decision to keep the kid while that may not have been fair i do believe that god doesn't place more on you than what you can handle i'm already a mother i've done it once i knew that i always wanted another kid that was my blessing so many people out there that can't have kids so many people that really want to have a kid and they can't and like i'm that person that from the moment that i found out that i was pregnant i was attached because for me i've already been through what it takes to grow a baby what it feels like to have a baby is such a great and amazing experience so I was prepared to take on that responsibility by myself I knew that I would have family support and I knew that I could do it by myself while that's not ideal I do want to say a little disclaimer for that if you are a person that makes the decision to raise a kid alone I do not feel like it's right to later come back and oh i'm gonna put the dad on child support after they deliberately said they don't want to be there they don't want anything to do with this child i don't feel like that's right because i do feel like both parties have an opinion but it's the woman's body at the end of the day so she makes she's the she has the last say so i decided to keep my kid and i basically you know told him like hey i'm gonna keep my kid you don't have to be here like I'm not forcing you to be here but I'm not gonna shut you out either like I'm giving you the option to decide what you want to do and 
he said you know he doesn't want another kid but he's not gonna not be there for his kid and so at the time we kind of were just a fling like a little situationship i would always say i can keep you updated on the baby like we don't have to have conversations and talk to each other and do all of this because it just kind of confuses things and honestly in the beginning i would have rather him just say plain out like hey i don't want to be with you but i want to be in my kid's life like and not kind of drag me along when you are a woman and you're pregnant you want a partner there you want someone there going to doctor's appointments with you like you want peace throughout the months it just was an up and down roller coaster uh, it was very confusing for me and I was not strong enough to just cut the situation off which I wish I would have been just strong enough to just say hey I'm not dealing with this I was just so hormonal, emotional, going through this with someone who's like one foot in, one foot out, comes around sometimes and not all the time. And I guess I was just kind of accepting what he was giving me, although I knew it wasn't what I deserved. One thing I will say that there was a lot of cheating, a lot of mental abuse going on. It was hard. I'm still healing from it to this day but it took some time and I tried my hardest and my best to really just do things to fill my day that made me feel good. I would go on walks, I would go to the beach, I would try to get as much outside time as possible. I would try to go no contact with him. He would always find a way back to just bring himself back into my life. I remember on the morning of my gender reveal he didn't want to participate in these type of activities because he i don't know maybe if he was embarrassed to this day you know if you ever dealt with a narcissist they don't really ever tell the truth so to this day i still have never got the truth on that but he didn't really want to be there you could tell and it was just kind of like embarrassing for me with all my family around it was just super embarrassing. There would be times where he would just say really mean things in the beginning. Honestly, I wish I didn't put myself through that because we have choices and you have to think like all of the mental abuse that I put up with for nine months and then allowed him to be in my space when I gave birth to my son, like it, it's not worth it it's not worth it it's not worth it trying to see the good in someone trying to feel like oh maybe they'll get it together maybe they'll be here it's definitely not worth it it's not worth it at all that's such a a vulnerable moment in your life where you need all of the love you can get and for me i kind of just shut down I didn't talk to my friends, I didn't talk to my family, it was just me, my daughter, my dog, my little baby in my stomach every day. And you guys, um, if you OG, then you was there and you went through the pregnancy with me. One thing I can say is that putting myself through that toxic pregnancy with him did turn me into this insecure person because I'm growing a child. Your body changes, I'm changing, I'm scared, and all of the things in the moments that are supposed to be happy are not. And they could have been happy because you create your own happiness, but once again, you have to decide how to be happy. You have to decide who can be in your circle space and who can't. Towards the end, I started getting a little bit stronger, but I was still weak, so I still had him around. And then I feel like when everyone has a kid, they all try the family thing when the baby comes. Always. It always happens. Whether they try it or not, it's talked about, they try it. Maybe not everybody, but most people. And of course, that happened. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. And it, it's hard to leave 
during that time and no one really understands it everyone kind of looks at you like you're crazy like you're stupid but no one understands until they go through that deep down inside i always knew i would leave and get over it just once i started back to feeling like myself because it's so crazy that they they always do you like when you're at your worst they do you like the worst when you're at your worst postpartum i was at my lowest point i struggled trying to find who i was and i still haven't found who i am but i'm getting more so back to me postpartum was really really hard for me it was very toxic lots of arguing lots of mental abuse lots of back and forth and it's really not worth your sanity to go through that i wanted to talk about this for the longest because I know that there are other women going through the same thing and when I found out that I was pregnant, I looked up videos, trying to find videos on like unplanned pregnancy alone, doing it alone and all I'm here to say is you're better off doing it by yourself. If the situation is toxic, like that's what I'm speaking for, if it's toxic, it's not good, they're not gonna change. You have to put yourself and your babies first. And your mental. I spent all of 2023 refixing my mental state. That's it. All of 2023. And I'm just now <laughs> to the point where I feel like I'm strong enough to be okay with you know the situation be okay with everything i'm okay with not being friends i'm okay with not talking i'm okay with it a lot of people like to judge and you know a key 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 laugh and talk about how oh you know that couldn't be me i would have gotten an abortion i would have did this it's not easy to do that and i mean i'm not i've never done that I, i'm not speaking from experience but i just can just imagine it's not easy to make the decision to kill your child you know so you'll be fighting those feelings and how you feel about that but i guess it's to each his own what you can handle and what you can't i'm just here to say if you are going through a toxic pregnancy an unplanned pregnancy it's okay it's gonna be okay you'll make it through it gets better everything and all of those negative feelings go away when you hold that little baby in your hands because then everything from there on out you do you is for them like do they need to see their mom cry every night no it gets better on the other side i'm on the other side now surprisingly i didn't think i would get here i had lots of lots of lots of dark days lots of dark days guys lots of arguing with females lots of picking and i've just grown from that uh it took for me to move away <laughs> to get away from it but hey we got to do what we got to do we're loving ourselves we're putting our best foot forward to do best what we need to do for ourselves and i got faith in y'all i'm proud of you guys if you're standing on business keep standing on business if you weaken the knees that's okay take your time but not too much time because one wrong decision to love the wrong person can set you back so much that's all i'm gonna say don't ignore the signs okay that's gonna be it y'all for today's video um i hope that it kind of wasn't all over the place and it's sunshine at the end of that storm baby okay i'm just thinking back to you know those feelings like let me watch one i always i hate watching them so we'll see in a relationship um of all situations that I should have left um, no tears to finally leave. not gonna keep watching this because i got tears coming but i'm so proud of me i'm like i'm doing the damn thing like do you see me this glow is just it's nothing pretend it's for real so if i can make it through Y'all can make it through. I got faith in y'all. If you don't believe in God, I don't know what to tell you because God got me through that. God got me through that.
he did he did and i'm sharing this with you guys because i want you guys to know that you're not alone as i've stated before uh for many months i was scared to share my testimony to um be judged by you guys to be judged by other people but this is why i started my channel this is why i i'm the voice i'm the, I'm the voice like I'm the voice for the people and no everybody may not go through it so if this video is not for you then maybe it's just not for you but if it is I love you I'm sending you lots of love lots of positivity and you gonna get through it girl you gonna get through it okay and yeah I will see you guys on the next video where we're gonna talk about postpartum and kind of just trying to learn to love myself again after having a baby it's hard okay i'll see y'all on the next video bye hi guys as you can see i'm not okay <laughs> i just want to talk about how it's hard um keeping a baby by someone who is mentally not capable of loving you right and then also keeping a kid when you're already mentally not there um i'm just sad and a lot of things are getting to me right now um with me being pregnant but Sometimes I feel like I am not worthy of love. <laughs> and lately it's just been really bad. <laughs> and the sadness that I feel is not good. <laughs> I cry every day. And I feel alone. And I felt alone before, but I feel really alone. Growing a child and feeling alone is sad. And when you see other people who have done it right, it is sad. And it is triggering. And it hurts. And then you can't talk to anyone because it's, no, oh, you made this decision. Oh, you did this. And I don't regret my son and I don't regret keeping him. I love him so much.